Okay, uh, hi everyone. Welcome back to week eight of this week's of tutorial. Um, I hope you guys did okay for the midterms last time. The midterms yes, last time was quite okay. It wasn't that hard. It wasn't that easy, but it was certainly very tricky. So if you weren't very careful, if you just rush to a conclusion, most likely you'll make a mistake here and there. Um, anyways, um, today we will not be talking about victims at all. Today we'll be just moving on to the next topic, which is map filter and reduce, which is a type of higher order function that is already predefined inside Python itself. Uh, map filter reduce, map at least for map and filter, right? They are very useful. That's why it's very important to be able to understand uh, how to actually use map and filter in application. Uh, moreover, um, this was not really discussed in depth in lecture. That's why we'll be discussing it more in depth in tutorial. So I think there are five parts to this tutorial. First is um, the standard. Uh, what is this output? Second is scale, uh, scale and square tuples, which is an extension of what we learned in lecture. Part three is basically trying to do sum digit square using map and sum. For those of you who forgot what sum digit square is, basically we're trying to sum the digits of a number, but then before we sum them up, we try to we square the numbers up, then we sum it up. Next up, we have Taylor series using map. So Taylor series, for those of you who are not really familiar with it, is basically a method to actually approximate the value of sine, cos, and tan here. So in the when you actually try to sum up these uh, um, components up in a series, uh, the value will be approximately so close to the value of sine x, cos x, or tan x. We'll be uh, trying that. And lastly, uh, we'll be talking about reduce, uh, quite obsolete function, but then we'll discuss it for the sake of knowing it. But before that, uh, what I want to do is I want to do a little refresher of what map and filter does. So yeah, um, this is map and filter. Just ignore the header first. Uh, ignore the header first, focus on this. So I think this is um, a visual representation of what um, what map does. Um, so we have an input sequence over here. Let me write it out. We have an input sequence over here, and then this is the output sequence. It's quite annoying. Okay. So in the input sequence, we have a to k. And then the output, right, we have F, A, F, B, F, C, F, D, F, E, F, and the F, Q. So in the map function itself, we have two inputs. One, first is a function, and second is a sequence, the input sequence. Now the function, right, can be literally any function. For example, this case, it's a lambda. But then technically, you can just write like str or F or foo. It's going to be perfectly fine. Okay, if you write foo, then this will be foo a, foo b, and etc. So some characteristics to take note here in map is that first the output, the output right is the output from the function itself. Secondly, the length, the length of the input is equal to the length of the output. And lastly, one, one thing to, to remember is that in the function, right, it takes in only one parameter. So it doesn't take two parameters, it doesn't take three, it doesn't take zero, it just takes exactly one input. Same as this. Okay, so that's for map, I think. Um, I mean, the word map itself means like there's a one-to-one -one pairing between two values. So imagine that there's the input set and output set. Map, map, a mapping function is the function that defines how is the set in the input set or input list is connected to the uh, items in the output list. Okay. 
think that's what you need to remember. Next, we have filter. Now, filter is a little bit more unique. Uh, to make it easier, um, I have added this. It's okay, so it doesn't really work this way, but this is for easier visual representation. So, filter is the same. The structure we have one function and one sequence. This is our input sequence. Now, for filter, there is an intermediary step. So the intermediary step is actually we try to map the input sequence into using the function sequence here. Now, after we map them one by one, what's the next step is to actually evaluate the true value of the of the objects inside the intermediary step okay so first is map second is evaluate true value and lastly if you can see say in this case the true the ones that are true are only like a b e h and i and uh uh, collect all the true values and create a final list and if you can pay attention here the final list right are not f a f b f c but the final list are a b and e so the final list right should have the item should be this more or less the same with the input lah. okay several characteristics in a filter function is that um, first the length of the output may be less or equal to the length of the input this is pretty obvious but sometimes it can be quite useful like, in trying to understand how it works and secondly is the function function is still the same it will only take in one input it doesn't take more than one or more or less than one but lastly is the interesting part is usually here like, boolean um, as I mentioned before in the intermediary step, uh, we try to evaluate the true value. So usually, usually the function, right, is usually the, the function will produce an output or a return value of, in Boolean. For example, x less than 7, x equals to high high, or perhaps like x is in sequence A, anything that produces a boolean value okay now uh the question is what happens if we don't insert in the boolean what happens if our function doesn't return a boolean value right say the function returns a string an integer or a list who god knows what as mentioned in the previous in earlier tutorials we can evaluate the value we can evaluate the true value of non-boolean uh, variables for example string integer and list and the rule is as long as they're not zero empty string or empty list empty tuple or empty 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 then they're evaluated as true if they are empty they will be evaluated as false so hence Whatever your function is, right, as long as it takes in one input and has an output, there it will not produce an error. It the true value can still be assessed. Alright, any questions so far? If there are no questions, can you give a thumbs up? All right, if there are no questions, then uh, we're gonna test you. Uh, let's test you guys, whether you guys actually understand or not. So we have this function of, we have this uh, part one, map and filter. Again, uh, we will, ref uh, let's ignore this part. Just, just, I know for those of you who have tried in Python, right? This map, right, will actually produce a map object instead of the list. For this exercise, we'll assume that uh, 
Okay, the output is a list. Lah. The output of the map function is a list. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then just ignore me and just go along. Okay, so um, we have several questions here. So um, uh, please answer the questions in the Zoom chat. Okay, so let's start with A. What's the answer for A? Let's start those uh, messages rolling in the Zoom chat. Okay, there are two different answers. There's true, false, false, true, 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 and 93456. Okay, so I think. Okay, so first of all, let's identify what this is. This is a map function. And a uh, law. Okay, so be careful. This is actually a map. Hence, that's why um, technically the output should have equal length with the input. Okay, so we're not removing anything. We're just changing the value in the list L, 9 to 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, according to the function. So in this case, we'll try to evaluate whether 9 is greater than 2 or not. 2 is greater than 2 or not, 1 is greater than 2 or not, and so on. It results a list. As that's our output, like true, false, false, true, 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 true. Okay? So be careful on the function itself. This, because remember, right, as I mentioned, both map and filter can take in any function, and the output can be literally anything. Like. Even like list uh, a filter right, can take in a non Boolean function, it still works. So be careful. So next question, what's the answer? I, I suppose that you guys already got the answer for the next question. Right, very good. Basically, you try to filter the list according to this rule. We know that it's going to be false on two and one. Right, so we'll just remove that and take in the things that actually qualify. Good job. Now next for question C, what's the answer? Um, okay, other people? Okay, if, you're, if you agree with her, just write, yeah, I agree or copy her list. All right, I think everyone can agree. Sure. All right, smart dot copy. Okay. So yeah, um, I think uh, what's important here if we can break it down. So in this case, this is an if else statement, x modulo two, and x modulo two the output is technically only zero and one, and we know zero is evaluated as false, and we know if it's false, it's gonna produce an e. If it's one, it's gonna produce uh, O. The question is, how do we get zero and one? I think uh, for those of you who have been working on this a lot, you know, odd numbers. If X is odd, then it will produce a one. If X is even, it will produce a zero. So then we know if it's even, it's gonna produce an E. If it's odd, it's going to produce an O. Hence, we see the list, what is odd. Nine is odd, so we're going to give an O. E, O, O, E, O, E. Right, well done. Now the question is, what's the answer for D? Wow, bold answer. L. Any other answers? Does anyone agree with uh, Chin Sung? What's the answer for D? Agree, agree. Everyone else, what do you guys think?
Yeah, uh, is there no list for C? Oh yeah, there's a list, uh, but I'm just lazy to put. Okay. Sorry, Ethan. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the, uh, the answer is correct. Nothing got, got filtered. So it's still 9, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. The reason is, remember when we do filter, right? When we do filter, um, there's this intermediary step that we're trying to do. And so we'll try to map based on the function. And in fact, uh, we already have the map. See, like, this is the same function as question C, and this is the product of the map. So now the product of the map is OE, OO, E, O, E. We try to evaluate the truth value of them. And if you know, all of these are non-empty string. Because they're not empty string, it means everything is evaluated as true. True, 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 true. Now, if everything is evaluated as true, then technically you don't remove anything. Because you only remove items that are false. Hence, it did, did not get filtered. Okay. Is it good, Yeche? Thank you so much. All right. Next question. Question E. Anyone? All right. Um, yep. Uh, it's actually 9135 with each item is string. So this is the case where we actually do map and filter at the same time. So in this case, what we do is we do the filter first. And in this case, it filters out all the even numbers. And then using the function string, it will convert everything to a string. Oh, okay. Uh, someone asked me to explain D again. Again, as I mentioned before, when we do filter, we kind of have an intermediary step before we arrive to the final answer. We have this intermediary step of mapping. So we try to map the sequence based on this function. Okay. Now, um, Yeah, yeah, let me, okay, okay, just give me a moment. Someone asked for, for me to re-explain question D. After, so we, so we have this filter over here. Right? We have filter lambda x. Da, da, da. So what we want to do is we actually, instead of jump straight into filter, we want to map the list L according to the function. And if we want to map the list L according to this function, we actually have the answer in question C. Right. Now, because, uh, Now, the product of the mapping is this, O, E, O, O, E, O, E. Now, O, E, O, O, E, O, E are non -empty. So now we need to evaluate the true value. So to decide which are the, which from the original list are we going to take in and remove. If it's true, we keep. If it's false, we remove. Now, because now if we evaluate O, E, O, E, O, O, E, O, E, these are non-empty strings. As we mentioned in the previous tutorial and at this point, you must already know that that string, a non-empty string, will be evaluated as true. Because they will be evaluated as true, hence uh, the list, the result of the mapping will be true, 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 true. Now, based on this diagram over here, if it's true, then I'll take the original input into it. Now, imagine if everything is green, everything is true. It means I take every single object right hence because of that the result of question d is nine two one three four five six okay i hope that answers the question because that is a very fundamental uh, knowledge uh, from early on okay for question e uh, thanks for those who are helping in the chat that explains about how 
the health string actually changes each object inside the list into a string. Okay, so last question, F, question F. What's the answer for question F? Answers, answers. All right, uh, well done. So it's very, very good. It's very easy. So what we do is, it's a, actually two stage. We have list L, and then we have a map, and then we have a filter, and then a string. This one is nine, two, one, three, four, five, six. Uh, we map it by square, so we have 81, 4, 1, 9, 16, 25, and 36. And then we kind of need to filter it, x greater than 30, meaning that only 81 and 36. And then we convert it into a string, 81, 36. But this one, the difference is that because the string function is outside and it's not like mapped in, hence we don't really convert the value of each item in the list into string. We just convert the entire object of the list into a string. So to put it nicely, 81, 6. All right, we're done with part one. Any questions? There are... Mm. Yes, it's possible. Um, um it is possible um because uh it's possible i'd say it's possible it's because of a unique python thing so like if you just combine between map and filter together right it can you know try to mix they'll automatically mix them up together You don't really have to convert it into a list, but if you just want to be safe, you can convert it into a list yourself. Any other questions? If there are no questions, just keep a thumbs, give a thumbs up. All right, uh, good job. Um, all right, I'll just clear the annotation. Now we'll move forward to the next part, which is scale and square tuples. This is gonna be very fast. I think I'm just gonna take like three minutes, maybe max. Just give me a moment, uh, please be kind. Uh, okay. So, the, 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 actually, this is a bad idea. Uh, I just do. Yeah, maps work for tuples as well. So yeah, um, this. So in lecture, we have actually talked about how to scale a list, right? From five to 10, one to two, four times, you know, scaling by two, or, you know, just square them up. So, um, you know, this is the function that is given, right, in lecture. So how do you actually convert the function for a tuple? So you can do this. Um, Right. This is the recursive function. So if you can see, if not, if sequence is not empty, just read. If sequence is empty, return sequence. Else, you know, just take the first object and then recurse the rest. This one is a pen. Now, using this code, right? How do you actually 
this only works if it's it, the output will always be a list regardless of what is your input. Now, how do you want to create a function but then the output is a tuple? The reason I cross it out for to try for five minutes because it's not worth lah, to actually try out yourself because like it's very simple. You just need to change the, your process into a tuple ask style. So for example, make sure that you start with a tuple and your uh, calculations use a tuple and you return the tuple and actually tup, an actual tuple. So it's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, so any questions for part two? No questions. Okay. Um, okay. Moving. No. No. I know. I know. I know. Just I was looking at something else. It's okay. Okay. Next up, we have. The third part of the question today, third part, which is we are trying to do some digit square uh, using map and sum. So I think this is, part three and part four is very similar. So we'll try to see the application of how we actually do use map in real life. So we know that we can actually call, try to convert values into one value to another in a very fast way so like if you have a sequence and then we just want to convert it everything to the same way you'll use map now we'll see it in some digit squares so yeah how to sum the digits so if you want to sum the digits right it's very easy you just need to convert it into a list and then make sure you just add them up right so in this case uh doesn't matter lah so what some of what some of you did was actually just to convert it into a list and you know if you can convert this to an integer right if you can convert this to an integer you can sum them up okay so you can use map to actually apply the square to them but then if you just apply square to them it will produce an error la. okay yeah, so you can actually use map integer. So, okay, la, this one is the prof one make, la, so it's a bit messy. Basically, yeah, you can also, do, you can uh, convert it into an integer. And if you sum them up, it's going to work. But the question is, you want a sum of digit squares. Okay, you don't want just the sum of the digits one by one. So what's, so how do you sum digit squares? Uh, can you uh, can you write the lambda that's supposed to be in here inside the chat? All right, integer x times integer x. Any other answers? All right, very smart. Okay, very good. So very simple, right? That's how you actually do. Um, that's how you do like. If you just want to sum the digits and everything, if you have an array and then you want to do something with each item in the same way, you just use map. All right, very easy. Um, any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, we'll move on. So we'll move on to the fourth part. Okay, this is my fastest. Uh, my fastest tutorial ever. So in the fourth part, oh, I see someone in the chat. We're moving to the fourth part already. So the fourth part, we're gonna use Taylor series. Uh, we're gonna use map for Taylor series. Now, if you pay attention over here, right? Um, maybe you guys are a bit confused how to break it down. So if you understand, this is the breakdown of the Taylor series. So you have um x x3 x5 and so on so this is somewhat like a series you know like a sequence or a list right yeah i know 
typo. It's not Taylor Swift, guys. It's Taylor series. Okay. Um, as I mentioned before, if you actually try to sum up all the these up together, it can approximate the value of sine x. So that's what we're trying to do here. How can we actually try to come up with this particular list and you know use as we use C in some digit squares before, we just need to write sum and then it will sum them up and give us the value of sine x. How do we come up with this? Okay. So I think uh yeah, we can use higher order function, right, for this. So, for example, uh, note this sequence. We have this function over here. Yep. And we have this that results in this. So what we can do is that this is n0, n1, and then this is n2. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is uh, n and so on and if you can actually understand right this thing over here right will actually generate a sequence from n 0 n 1 2 3 till infinite so we kind of understand here that what happens here is that we have an initial sequence list here 0 1 2 3 4 5 so on and it will be mapped one to one by this particular function here. If this is a function, f minus one n to the power n x two n, and this is going to be f zero, f one, f two, and so on. Okay. So um, we can try to um, represent this as a function. Right, in which is uh, we can call it like say CF, but then we don't have the input of X yet, so we kind of need another function to get the value of X. So we just map the value, da da da, something like this. So, um this is an example some sample function so for, we have uh, yeah so this we have a fun this f function which is basically representing this and then this is the function that to take in the value of x you can see that this returns this and what this function does that it will actually uh, map the value from 0 to 10 and no, 0 to 9 because technically python cannot handle infinite so if you want to do like a hundred or a thousand you can also do it um then after that what you can uh, the cf right will actually map the value one by one accordingly and now remember right cf in higher order cf will return this now, um, since x is not defined inside the nested function, we look for x in the outer function, which is defined here lah, in my cos x. Okay. Now, I know you guys don't understand, and the best way to understand is to actually try it yourself. Okay. So, just give me a minute. I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna screenshot this. I'm gonna send it in the uh, Telegram group, right? Okay. So now what's gonna happen is that uh, you need to try to come up with your own Taylor function, Taylor series, okay? Using the function that we are sent. Uh, using the Taylor function that uh, is available here, try to come up with the Taylor series function in, inside Python. I'm gonna take a screenshot here and send it to the group. So uh, after this, I'm gonna break you guys into breakout rooms. Uh, if you guys ask, uh, 
uh, no, you just need to import factorial lah. Just import it. As as Chin Sung mentioned, you learn new faces from this CS tutorial every week. So it's okay if you learn new faces. It's it's okay. Time to make friends. Okay, isn't that cool? Okay, hi everyone. Welcome back. Uh, let's see what we got here in our code share. Uh, okay, uh, I've seen some answers. Okay, so for those of you who are evening. Okay, for those of you doing art course, please. Uh, I already have a strong feeling that you guys are gonna do this, but uh, a bit lazy though. Okay, I think uh, let's see and compare. So I think uh, generally, I think it should be all right. As I think you guys are know what to change. You guys already changed this, and you guys kind of understand how it works. It's nice that you use factorial here. Arc sign, okay, it's pretty good. You guys understand that the function name can be anything. Uh, nice, okay, I like this. Arc cos sign, we have this. Uh, do any Aktan? Anyone does it? The people from Aktan. We have two groups doing Aktan, and no one does Aktan. We have eight people. Anyone? Okay. Okay. I'll just refresh. I don't see any Akhtan. Where is it, Yeji? Maybe ah, okay, okay, I see it. All right. So, okay, again, as I mentioned before, the range does not have to be pair zero to ten. It can be zero to hundred, zero to one thousand, as long as it starts from zero, as it is defined in the function. Okay, so. I think I'm just gonna bring this here for reference. Okay, so I think um, actually it's wrong. Actually, uh, okay, actually it's wrong. Uh, okay, so I think I see a lot of answers. I, I'm expecting two different two functions for Akhtan, but then. I cannot get those two functions, then I'm okay, I suppose. Um, thanks, guys, for participating. I hope that you guys you find that experience in quite enriching. As we can see, um, actually quite similar. Okay. Uh, okay. We have sine x. It's correct. We have the minus one over here, and then the x to the to the power of n plus one here. We have the factorial down here. This one is already pretty similar. Okay, maybe there's an indentation problem. Okay, um, it should not be returning another lambda. It should just return this because the reason is, uh, if you return a lambda, right, meaning that f will. Uh, Later on, right, the result of the map will be all lambdas, lah. Like it will be just an an array of lambdas, like uh, lambda, lambda, lambda. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, cause uh, cause the double angle formula. Oh, okay, okay. When I write sin sine two, right, it just refers to your group, lah. It refers to your group, like oh, is it this group one, group two? Cause like there are two groups that are doing. Uh, there are two groups that are doing sign lah. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, so uh, need to do double angle formula. Um, not really ah. Uh, like uh, 
the angle is you get the angle from this like, sine 2x from the x here and then this is basically the end the one that converts the 0 1 2 3 4 5 to the actual uh, function okay so okay just if you're confused take your time arc sine yeah this one is okay then we have arc sine yeah we have two two n factorial of two n times four times n and factorial and the power so it's a bit complicated i believe this also achieves the same way a bit different but then it's the same okay then we have arc cos which is technically true it's just like pi over 2 minus arc sine but then yeah i hope that you guys can actually come up with this okay i don't understand whether this is plus it's supposed to be minus right right and this is empty okay we have arc cosine another function not bad then finally we have arc tan so I think you guys also did a good job. All right, good job, everyone. So I hope that through the breakout room experience, you guys actually learned. So for those of you who already can, I hope you guys taught, uh, teach those who cannot do it. If you want to save the code, feel free. It's going to be gone in 24 hours. If you don't, it's OK, because technically the code is here. You can just convert this into code. All right, um, so I think I'm going to show you guys like uh, there's even more applications to map. So um, we actually have this. Uh, remember burger price, right? We actually can um, calculate burger price using map. How? Uh, maybe any ideas how, how we actually use map? Oh, OK. Sorry, sorry. I'm too rush, too rush. Um, can you explain why need range 0 to 10? Okay, uh, why we need range 0 to 10? Remember? Um, this thing over here is a sigma, sigma n to infinity. It means that we know that we gonna, you know, if we iterate the value for i in range n is 0 to infinite, if that exists. Then usually we have like a uh, total goes to zero and then like later total is total plus whatever the formula here la, f i okay so the problem with uh, python is uh, the problem with python is that um, yeah you cannot just like go infinite la. so you want to do like range n you kind of want to limit it because uh, theoretically speaking, theoretically speaking, for those of you who are unaware, the, the bigger the end, the smaller the number gets. Okay, So as the series go longer and longer, right, uh, the value will be smaller. So this will be smaller than, greater than this, greater than this, and like this. So as the end gets bigger, n gets bigger, fn gets smaller. And so at a certain point, right, you can technically cut off the end and the number should not change a lot. Correct. The, the bigger the range is, the more accurate it is. But then bigger range means more computational power or computational resource. Yeah, correct, correct. Each term get things smaller. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So that's why we kind of just limit it to n. Lah. In this example, we limit it to 10. I know 10 is not really accurate but then you can kind of increase it to a hundred or a thousand. Yeah, you can try. Do a hundred. So the range here is basically because we know it's a summation. So it kind of needs to convert like zero, one, two, three to the function. Lah. It's just the nature of the question. Other questions may have a different array. It does not necessarily range. Yeah, the value 10 here is just for example. You can, the number, the number 10 is arbitrary, but the starting number of zero is not. It must start from zero. As you can see that there's a requirement here to start from zero. In fact, if you can see here, right, tan x 
requires you to start from one instead. It requires you to start from one instead of zero. Any questions? Uh, the days are you do, you, do you understand? Okay, so yeah, uh, I'll show you. Uh, okay, next up we have the burger question. Technically, we can do the burger question using map. Can anyone tell me how, um, can anyone like sp spit out ideas on how to actually do burger price? We sum the price of the burger using map. Don't be so negative. Okay, uh, yeah, correct, Kai Hong. So what we want to do is we actually want to convert. So remember burger, right? We have like a bun, uh, patty, veggie, cheese, maybe bun. So we know map, right? Map, you kind of want to convert it to a similar list. So the thing that you want to convert to is actually the price. So like, what? And then after you get the entire price, you sum them up. In fact, when we tried to attempt this question right early on in the semester, some of you actually gave this methodology that, oh yeah, you need to kind of like convert everything to its price and then like save it in a list and then say, uh, sum it up. However, at that point, we haven't reached that skill level yet. So yeah, eventually what you want to do is you do as EHA mentioned, sub, map, F, list. So the last thing that you kind of need to create is the F over here. How do you create the function? So this is our final version from tutorial tree. And like intuitively, these are technically a function because you are mapping each character which its price, right? So this is we can actually create the function price here. And yeah, basically, as you guys mentioned, burger price m um, sum map price burger. We can improve the price function further by using a dictionary. I think when we learn dictionary, we know that this is much better. Okay, now I think there's a question before. Why there is no need to convert the string burger into a list first? Any answers in the chat? Okay, Adele, I just saw your message. You know, we don't try to convert the food into shit. We try to convert the food into price. That's my job to convert food into shit. Yeah. Any reason why we don't need to convert the string burger into a list? Correct. Uh, burger is a string. It's already iterable, so you can map them directly. Nice. So uh, we can even go more extreme. Like we don't even need to like define two different functions. We can use a lambda. Remember to store everything into a one line. So this this thing is what we call one liner function, where we only have the the def, the function definition and one return statement and nothing else. Okay. Wow, well, I'm not a streamer. Leh. It feels like I'm a game streamer now. So in this case, uh, we try to com condense the price function into one line into this particular lambda. Yeah, as you can see, uh, lambda x, so it, it's a function that takes in one input, and then that input will be used as a key to the dictionary here. Okay, I don't get this. Uh, okay, this part over here is a dictionary. And then this part over here, I think I'll use a different color. Is an index. Okay, 
Does that answer your question, Ye Chie? Yep, correct. You get the value. Very good. You do get the value. So I'll remove. So this this is called a one-liner function. Now we're gonna talk more about one-liner function, a little detour. So one-liner function definition is the function only has one line, excluding the function deification. I don't know what the hell is that is, and without the semicolon. So for exa an example of a one-liner function is uh, this thing. This is actually a one-liner function. So there's just like the def definition and one written statement. And this one liner function, right, although it's only one line, it actually can produce uh, 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 results that are usually hard to do in one line. So for example, this one line right, can actually give us the longest word in a sentence. So apparently in this particular sentence, the longest word is punctuation. Now, if you don't understand the function, it's okay. It's not for you to understand. But then, there's a problem like, with this one-liner function. Uh, okay, you cannot see. Ah, okay, so the pro first problem is that sometimes it's not readable. Like this, right? It's a bit confusing to read. It's not really intuitive to understand. So that's why sometimes one-liner function are not really great. But sometimes it's kind of useful as well. Depends. Huh? And second, it will introduce bugs. Usually with one liner function, right, they assume that the input is perfect. Meaning that the, the input is perfect, there are no weird inputs, yada, yada, yada. Because it assumes that the input is perfect, it, uh, when, once like the input is already slightly out of range, it can actually be buggish and produce problems. So if you can come up with one line function, that would be very great. So, uh, example of more one-liners are this. For example, we can actually check the palindrome of a string. Yeah, we can get the value of a pal one line palindrome. This or printing out a file, or factorial, or the sieve of Aristoteles, where you can actually find all prime numbers below n using this particular one line. And if you died reading that, same. I also died inside reading that. Okay, yeah, the difference between sort and sorted, I'm not so sure. I'm not, I don't remember. I need to Google for that. Okay, so that's about one-liners. Huh? That's a little detour. Don't worry much about it. Um, to be honest, for me personally, I do like one-liners. Like, um, whenever I grade your assignments, uh, if I see there's a one-liner, it just brings me joy because I know that People that come up, can come up with one-liners really understand the things that they, they type or they just cheat off from the internet. Okay, It just brings me great joy because it's kind of like code chasm. Okay. Um, sort modifies the least. Okay. Thanks, uh, Nick, for the clarification. Um, next up, we have the very final part of our tutorial which is uh, reduce. So anyone, can you guys, uh, here's the code for reduce. Can you predict what the mm -hmm. function will do when we call reduce lambda x, y, x plus y, one, two, three, four? Yo, stop complimenting each other. Answer the question. Yes, it's dead. Does anyone has a differing opinion? Why is it then? All right, let's let's dig deep. Okay. Reduce and reuse and recycle. So observe the function reduce, right? We have a very simple example. So if we can see uh, if not in C, if you try to observe here, right? If not, if it's an empty sequence, then it will just return the sequence. Else, if it's else, 
If it's not, we'll take the first item in the sequence. And then we'll always like do combine the function together. And if you are lazy to understand the code, then I'll just visualize it for you. Basically, uh, the reduce function works this way, where we take in the first two elements and combine them using the function f. And then like after combining them together, we'll combine the third one, fourth one, fifth one, and sixth one. Okay. So in the case of an addition, this is what happens. You do one plus two, and plus three, plus four, plus five, plus fifth. So the characteristics of a reduce function is usually the function that it, the input function that it takes is that uh, the lambda right takes in two parameters instead of one compared to earlier functions of filter and map. I think this one is very important. It takes in two instead of one. So this is important to take note of. Now why uh, reduce is not really important. Wait, okay, actually before that. So um, that is summation. Okay, so what if we want to do this? Uh? I forgot what's this. Uh? I, I know this is not sigma, but I always forgot the name. What if we want to do a multiplication C series? What should be in the lambda? What should be the function? Eh? What should be F? Can anyone type in the answer? What should be the value of f? Anyone? What's the what's the value of f? Yes, thanks, Pikachu. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. So you just change the plus sign to a multiplication sign. Very easy, right? Okay. Don't need to think lah. Too hard. So you just multiply, multiply, multiply. Okay. All right. So I think uh, before I yield questions, I think a very simple, uh, simple thing. Um, History of reduce. So reduce was actually a built-in function for Python in 1994, and around 2016, reduce was moved to a package called function tools. And basically, function tools are the graveyard of useless functions. So basically, if a function is being deprecated or not being used that often, we'll just move it to function tools. So um, yeah, to use reduce, you kind of need to import it from function tools. But then like um personally i would not use reduce it's very rare to use reduce because usually we'll i'll just use a for loop or if you just want to plus right you just do use a sum so it's it's just for you guys to know lah because like i think yeah reduce is quite it's it's use is quite limited the same document you can so see two convenient functions was added in Okay, I know you cannot see, but it's basically the function any and all. Can anyone tell me what, can anyone guess what does any do? The function any and all. Oh, I love the pun. They reduce the importance of reduce. I love that pun. Okay, can anyone tell me like what's the function of, what's any and all? Yeah, uh, just try to guess lah. Like you guys never know, right? Just try to guess what does any and all is for. Any other guesses? Just wildly guess. So I cannot. I don't think. I don't know as an answer. Just guess. What do you think? 
Yes, it does return true false. But how do you return true false? Like how does any producer true false? How does all producer true false? All right, lah, enough guessing. I guess you guys don't want to guess. Sad. So um. So this is how any works, lah. Any works if you guys can see. So any will take in a. The function any right will take in a. Seek a list of true false statements. And basically, any right, as long as there's one true statement right inside, true value inside the list, then it will return true. If everything is false, then it will produce false. Remember, this is list comprehension. Pikachu are nice, guys. Pokemon are great. A good childhood memory. Um. Whoa, 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 whoa! No fat shaming, guys. No fat shaming. Uh, no, it's not animal slavery. It's it's called the pet. Okay. Anyways, anyways, it's that you guys are digressing. So basically, any right? Uh, it takes in uh, a sequence of boolean values. Sequence of boolean values. And then basically, if there's any true statement, it's gonna return true. So it's like an or a conjunction of many or statements. Okay. Opposite to any is all. All is basically like and. So it's just like and statement and and. So for all, right? All must be true. If not, it's gonna return false. All right? There's a non-prime number here, then it returns false. Okay. Everything is non-prime. For any, you are no. For any, right? It's just it just needs to be a list of. It just needs to be a sequence, ah. For any or all, it just needs to be a sequence. In this case, it's a list comprehension, lah. Why we use list comprehension is because we want to convert the values inside L into a true false value. So technically, you can replace this with a map as well, like list map. Any sequence can, as long as the value becomes boolean. Yeah lah, because if the value is not boolean, it's kind of useless. Because then technically, like if it's a string or an integer. Everything will be available as true unless it's an empty string or zero. Yeah. Yep, correct, Adele. So it's like a sort of and and or. So, yep. Okay. So I I don't think we really need to dig deep into this lah. Um. So it's just like that lah. Uh. So that's the end of this week's tutorial. Before I field questions, I want to do a public service announcement first. So I know this class actually has done quite a lot, but then for those of you who haven't, yeah, I have 12 more minutes. I have, I still have 12 minutes of your time and I want to use that 12 minutes of your time for survey. So in the case of you guys don't know, we are running a midterm survey. You can find the survey in the survey column on your left bar of your menu. You can go there and see the midterm survey. You can actually uh, do your midterm survey now. Oh my god, please don't let me explain to you copy. Okay, please try to fill in the midterm survey as serious as possible because midterm surveys are very useful for the course, for the lecturers, for me. Um, CS Dandani is in its third iteration. We have improved so much from past students' feedback, but yet, uh, it's still, we admit that it's still far from perfect. So we really need your opinion to make it better. So just make sure that you pick in the right tutorial. Okay, and just give the feedback. Uh, okay, don't forget in the feedback for your tutor, copy your tutor's name in the feedback. Um, try to give serious feedback. Uh, so try not to just like fill in as fast as possible. Please try to take your time and fill in serious feedback. So if you 
Okay, so what's going to happen after this is that uh, please open the midterm survey and fill it up. Um, while you guys are filling it up, uh, I'll be answering questions as well. So if you have questions, please ask them in the Zoom chat. I'll be staying until 2 p.m. as usual. And if you guys, um, yeah, if you guys are done and you guys have no more questions, feel free to leave the tutorial room. If you guys uh, want to stay around and ask more questions, feel free to stay. All right, I'll stop the recording here.